And welcome to the Lawn Job Show. Good Friday, guys. I am John. No Chris tonight. He's doing a uh, Mardi Gras ball celebration type thing. Yes, we start early here in South Louisiana. It is Friday, the 20th, 2023. The Lawn Job Show is a little something extra. I just do this on my free time because I like it. And this is going to be one of those nights I want to talk about a subject, more in particular, a story that the mainstream media is not going to touch. A couple of them had like a little mention here or there months ago, and they left it alone, and they're not coming back to it. And this is a story I feel everybody needs to know. This is a big story, and so we are going to tackle it tonight. It's going to be a one-subject show the Lawn Job Show is a long-form format show. I record live on my personal Facebook page. Welcome to comment. And so that's where I do get the comments. After it is recorded, I share the video and audio to all of these. Like, share, and subscribe on as many of them as you can. Seriously, the program is... Some of the videos that I make don't show up on all the platforms all the time for one reason or another, whether it's technical issues, I got a strike on YouTube, whatever the case may be like share, subscribe to uh, all of these right here for more Lon Yop show content. Again, it's just me tonight and it's a one subject show. So I'm not going to be doing clips this week. So it's just going to be the long form show. If you don't like it, I'm sorry, but this is a very important subject that the mainstream media will not touch. Why? You figure it out. Look, I'm not the journalist here. I didn't do any investigation. I'm just going to read an article to you tonight that I believe you should know. Yes, uh, Audible, somewhere on there, just search The Lon Yop Show and uh, you should find it. You might have to do a little digging, but uh, it, it should be there. You know, get one of those businesses that you just upload it in one area and they syndicate it to a bunch of different ones. And Audible is on there as well as Amazon Music for some reason, but I didn't put the logo on there because that's just weird. But you can get the Lawn Yob Show on Amazon Music. All right, let's get into it. This is the story, folks. This is a story from Town Hall. So this has been coming out over the past week. The first article came out January 17th, and there's four parts. We're not going to do all four parts tonight. I don't have that much time. But this is written by Mia Cattell. Now, when I first seen this on Twitter, I clicked the link. I started reading on this, and I was like, wait a minute. Okay, Town Hall, I know they have a right-wing bias, but this isn't politics. This has nothing to do with politics. This is a story. So I got to look up and, and see what's going on with this. And I'm showing you, here's the Google search. I, I searched the family, the Zulok family. And here we go. It exists. So the Daily Mail covered it. And they covered it ag again. So you can see some of these headlines. Um, and, and if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, I'm going to read the headline from... Town Hall, we investigated a suburban LGBTQ pedophile ring. Here's what we found. And so I was like, okay, I got to check the sources here. So the Daily Mail did it. This is a Daily Mail uh, headline. Gay Atlanta couple charged with raping adopted sons also pimped them out to local pedophiles. Atlanta father charged with raping sons was accused of another sex crime seven years earlier. Okay, you got expat guide Turkey is covering this story. <laughs> I have no idea. New York Post covered it August 7th, 2022, but it was just charged with using their adopted children to make child pornography. That's all the New York Post did. The first time this story came out, that's all people talked about, and that was it. The guys went to jail, and they never followed up on it. So it's only Town Hall that's following up on it, 
they're doing some good investigative journalism, and then a few of these non-mainstream outlets are going to piggyback on it, just like I'm doing tonight. Uh, NBC News covered this. Now, look how NBC News phrase this. Georgia couple accused of producing child sex abuse images. Okay, look, it is way worse than that, and we're going to get into it. Uh, I'll show you what is going on. And then there you go. You get uh, Town Hall. The Daily Wire covered it. Couple, a uh, gay couple allegedly pimped out, made child porn with their adopted children. So here we go. I'm just showing you. There's other ones, but the mainstream media just isn't going to want to cover this. And I believe this is a story that you should know about because you're not going to see this on TV. And it's it's a touchy subject and. Who knows? I'm, look, all I'm going to do is read the article. So if it's okay to be in an article, then it should be okay for YouTube and Rumble, etc. There's not going to be any graphic images. They are edited. I'm just letting you guys know. And I'm not going to expand too much with my personal opinion and say crazy things. I'm just going to read the article because people should know. And so... I don't think there's any reason why YouTube or Rumble or one of these uh, other platforms will take this down, but you never know. And if they do, look, I don't argue, I don't contest the strikes I get against the YouTube channel and stuff like that, just because if they don't want me there, I'm just not going to be there. That's just how I feel about it. Uh, not worth my time. I'm not going to edit myself for that. So let's get into it. Again, this is part one. We investigated a suburban LGBTQ pedophile ring. Here's what we found. This is Mia Cathell. This first one came out January 17th, 2023. Part one of a four-part investigative series. The last part dropped tonight. Or this afternoon or something like that. So there is a content warning. Graphic descriptions of abuse and... I'll I'll try to, you know, as I read it, I'll try to edit a little bit, too, to where it's not too bad. But, I mean, you can just go and read it. So, a months-long town hall investigation reveals disturbing new details about the affluent LGBTQ activist couple accused of sodomizing their young adopted sons, now ages 9 and 11, and disturbing quote, homemade child pornography of the abuse. Half a year after the shocking story made national news, Town Hall is the only outlet to follow up on the criminal case in Georgia that has since seen zero headlines written about it. We found that it's far, far worse than what was initially reported. And this actually links back to the first Town Hall report. And then they went and did some investigative journalism. There are some real journalists still out there, folks. Thank God, because most of them uh, are not. Not only did the married men allegedly RAP the two boys who were adopted through a Christian special needs adoption agency, they were pimping out their children to nearby pedophiles in Atlanta area suburbs. Town Hall's follow-up investigation discovered this. Recorded jailhouse calls, a trove of never-before-seen court documents, and testimony from a family member who spoke exclusively with Town Hall. Yes, they talked with a family member. They uncovered the extent of the physical and emotional trauma the two elementary school age brothers endured, as well as the red flags that the state overlooked during the same-sex couple's Faster than expected adoption process. <coughs> so it, it seems like the process got sped up. So they link, this is uh, the part three linked here. And you can see uh, they're not going to show the kids' faces. They'll show the back of the heads, but not the faces. That's the Zulok family on vacation at the beach. So uh, this is one of them, Cloud Hunter 89 He posted, it's been just a, over a year as their parents. We have loved every moment of it. Was a little rough starting out 
but we beat the one-year mark. This was our second year to the ocean. Last year was the first time they seen it. I just love how this picture turned out. Our little hashtag adoption family. As Town Hall reported in August, the suspects were darlings of the LGBTQ media. They were part of an anti-gay hate campaign promoting hashtag no hate and out magazine, which holds the nation's highest circulation among LGBTQ monthly publications, has repeatedly asked them if its website's pride page can feature their photos taken at the Atlanta Pride Parade. We get into the charges. The adoptive fathers, 33-year-old government worker William Dale Zulock Jr. and 35-year-old banker Zachary Zach Jacoby Zulock, who was previously accused of raping a child from Oxford, Georgia, have been indicted by a grand jury on charges of incest, aggravated sodomy, aggravated child molestation, felony sexual exploitation of children, and felony prostitution of a minor. William and Zachary are each facing over nine life sentences. They pleaded not guilty. There are their pictures there. I just want to check on the stream real quick, and uh, everything is going good. So let's get back to it. William is there on the left. Zachary Zulak on the right. According to a copy of the 17-count indictment, Town Hall has obtained the adoptive dads allegedly performed oral on both, forced the children to perform on them, um, did the other stuff behind. In at least one instance, the behind stuff injured the oldest Zulok child who had just turned 11 years old in mid-December. Court records indicate that the abuse stretches back to as early as late 2019 and intensified in January 2021, March 2021, and December 2021 as the offense dates are listed. The brothers were enrolled in third and fourth grade, respectively, before the men were caught in a midnight July bust at the Zulok Mansion. Mansion which ended with Zachary tackled to the ground and William hauled out of the house naked by armed officers. William admitted to forcing his 11-year-old adopted son to perform acts on him, quote, with the intent to satisfy his own desire. That reads a sworn affidavit filed in support of Williams' overnight arrest back on July 27. They redacted the children's names here, but this is the affidavit. An updated criminal affidavit says the child sex abuse was filmed by Williams' husband, Zachary, quote, with whom he routinely engaged in the acts with the boy. Uh, Zachary, the household's breadwinner, confessed to being the cameraman, and authorities allegedly found a folder on his cell phone labeled US, or US, capital U, capital S, that contained videos of William doing the abuse. The indictment also charged the Zulak co defendants with soliciting two other men. Through the use of popular social media platforms in the greater Atlanta metropolitan region to perform an act of prostitution with their child that suffered physical injuries from the bad stuff. Town Hall is the first to publicly identify these two alleged members of a pedophile ring in the heart of the Peach State. 27-year-old Hunter Clay Lawless and 25-year-old Luis Armando Vizcaro Sanchez, both of Loganville. There you go. Lawless, who snitched on the Zulocks, 
told local law enforcement he received numerous messages via Snapchat from Zachary about mm, his son tonight and to be prepared to receive images as well as videos of the father doing the act. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Zachary met Lawless through a mutual contact, an unidentified man going only by the first name Blake on the gay dating app Grinder. Following the virtual introduction, Zachary sent photographs and videos to Lawless of a little boy he referred to as his son. I'm going to stand by. Zachary allegedly messaged Lawless on Snapchat and then sent pictures of himself doing the abuse. After he was busted, Lawless denied having any physical contact with the Zulok boys, but told local law enforcement that Zachary invited him multiple times to engage with him and his two children. A list of the state's evidence includes 149 images collected at the Zulok home, two flash drives containing Zachary and Lawless's phone data, uh, sexual assault nurse examination results from the children's medical forensic exams, which gathered DNA evidence such as bodily fluids and documented injuries, a text message from Lawless, a Snapchat letter, two written letters from the older Zulok child, and a disc containing a data dump from Viscaro Sanchez's iPad and iPhone. A photo of a daddy shirt is also an evidentiary item listed by the district attorney's office. Police had found the clothes in the older Zulok child's bedroom that matched the clothing the boy was wearing in the photos and videos Zachary allegedly sent Lawless. Years ago, Zachary had profoundly displayed a child size So Cool Like That t-shirt he received as a gift at his adoption shower. The relative on Zachary's side of the family, who agreed to speak with Town Hall on the condition of anonymity, <clears throat> excuse me, grilled Zachary during a series of recorded phone conversations in the fall of 2022 on who exactly Lawless is and how he knows the suspect. Here's a quote. I mean, like I said, I mean, not everything that's being said is accurate or true. So, I mean, and I'm not trying to lose everything. Zachary, who's being held separately from William while in pretrial detainment, replied. Zachary was transferred to the Barrow County Detention Center and placed on their maximum security due to the nature of the charges, a jail staffer told Town Hall. Quote, does this guy, Lawless, know you at all or is it some random thing? He's just trying to rat somebody, the relative asked. And Zachary responded, um, so last time he was here, I told him something, and it's, I told you last time he was here, I wrote him down something and gave it to him. Um, it's something around those lines, but more. Not much there. Zachary insisted a, in a separate phone call, all I can say is, you know, it's not true at all. That's all I can say. So he's saying it's not guilty. He's not guilty. It's not true. Innocent until proven guilty, but nobody's covering this story. I think this is a also a crime, too, by our media for not covering this story. So what is this person worried about? Listen to what, what he says here. This is Zachary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Saying, quote, I need someone in the family who doesn't hate me. So, I mean, I can't tell you what to feel or... I can't cry right now around other people. I just need somebody who doesn't hate us. That's what he's worried about right now. Just don't forget me. Zachary beseeched the relative at the end of their first call in September. Zachary began frantically searching for Lawless's profile on Facebook last January. The relative, who has access to his social media accounts, observed. Over on Snapchat, Zachary has active, unopened chats with multiple men, according to the source. 
Zachary, who lists his Snapchat username and his Instagram bio, where the self-described activist brags about being Papa to our wonderful boys, admitted to sending such material to less than a dozen people. There are other potential co-defendants under investigation that are out there circulating videos of the Zulok boys. Alcovey Judicial Circuit District Attorney Randy McGinley, who serves Walton County, told the court at a September 7th bond hearing, according to a transcript provided to Town Hall. McGinley said they just viewed underage boys as objects. We get to the raid and seizure port. Since the Zulocks have been taken into custody, the married men's assets have been seized. Their vehicles have been forfeited, and their home is now the property of the state with a lien filed against it. The Zulock couple's criminal defense attorney, John E. Haldy, said in court, adding that a sign on the Zulock house says, do not enter property of the Walton County Sheriff's Office. This is uh, their mansion. Quote, it's BS that they took our house. A frustrated William stuck in Walton County Jail protested via an hour-long phone call with the Zulock family insider. Quote, they seized the house, everything inside of it, all of our cars on the property, William said of the seizure. So that's what he's worried about. William recounted the night of the armed raid on the Zulock residence. Quote, they came in at 1130 at night. I was asleep. Zach was asleep. They were going to bust down our door if Zach didn't open the door. The relative asked, they ran the door down. He said they were about to, but Zach heard them knocking, and he actually went and opened the door. They slammed him on the floor, and um, I hate to say this, but, and then he chuckled, and he said, I don't sleep in clothes. So they arrested him in his bed while he was naked. He says, quote, and they walked me across my front yard, <coughs> put me in a police cruiser with no clothes. They wouldn't even let me get gym shorts or anything. William added that he sat there stark naked in the back seat of the patrol car until about four in the morning uh, while they searched the house, he says, for God knows what. Oh, there you go. They had to include that picture. We didn't need that, but. Uh, hopefully that helps my throat. Excuse me. Quote, yeah, you can tell in Zach's mug shot that he has a bruise on the left side of his face. The family member said, yeah, because they slammed him against the floor in the foyer. He had bruises on his knees, his face. They come in blazing with AK-47s or whatever, William continued, recalling about 10 to 15 officers. They were doing like a drug bust or something. Because they come in screaming and hollering and overkill, William whined. I'm pretty sure they ransacked the whole house. Quote, I think they took our house because they think there was extra money coming in from somewhere. And we're like in our 30s and have this big giant house. And I think they didn't think we could afford it, William said, describing the custom built home that he designed. The couple's dream home sits on a two acre secluded cul-de-sac in a private prestigious upscale neighborhood where Pre-existing houses are selling for as much as $900,000. Construction of the mansion from the ground up took only half a year in 2020. Quote, the kids love the forest behind us and the playroom for all of their toys, William wrote in a post celebrating its completion. Beforehand, the Zulocks lived out of a small house in Snellville, which the neighbors... Snellville. <coughs> Interesting name. Which the neighbors which neighbors Loganville at the time the boys were adopted. The couple's lavish lifestyle began to materialize after a year after the Zulock men got the boys, the family insider told Town Hall. In addition to the Zulocks considering purchasing the adjacent property, Zachary told friends they were looking to buy a condo over the next few years somewhere in Gulf Shores and Orange Beach along the southern tip of Alabama's White Sand coastline. I like going there. I, I, I do enjoy my vacations over there. Quote, getting ideas for our next house. William had cheekily captioned a picture taken in North Carolina outside the Biltmore Estate, a 250-room, 8,000-acre castle that is considered America's largest home and belongs to the industrialist Vanderbilt family. William went on to accuse the Walton County law enforcement officials of spinning some lies to seize their home. He said... <coughs> Excuse me, I've come to find out that most of these police officers in this county smudge and lie just so they can get a higher conviction rate. Me and Zach worked our butts off for everything we've had, William later declared. 
D.A. McKinley explained in an email to Town Hall that his office had filed a civil complaint seeking to forfeit the Zulot property. Forfeitures are a civil proceeding but handled by my office, McKinley wrote. In response, the Zulocs filed an answer and then McKinley's office filed a motion for a more definitive statement, which states that the answer was insufficient under law. The two Zulok men were both denied bond when Judge Foster determined that the co-defendants are threats to children in the community, flight risks at risk to the to commit new felony offenses and could intimidate and influence witnesses or victims. Quote, that was a sack of bricks that was dropped on everybody at the bond hearing. William commented to the relative. It keeps going, uh, folks. Like I said, we're not going to do all four parts and we're almost at the end of part one and which would pretty much be the end of the show tonight. But I just I want to wrap this up. I, I think this is something people should know. And then you can go and read all the other parts, all four parts, and tell people about it. This is something people should know because Fox, CNN, CNN uh, MSNBC, they're not doing it. They're not going in. This is just great investigative journalism by Town Hall. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's just not cooperating tonight. So inside the gayest place in town, nestled within a suburban paradise, the Zulak mansion turned house of horrors has surveillance cameras installed in every square foot of the property. Nothing wrong with that. I got surveillance cameras, too. Uh, the family member told Town Hall there was also a secret windowless room the size of a closet without any hidden doors or without any doors, rather hidden behind a movable bookcase in the home office that the cops left open which feels like something out of a horror movie, the relative said. I don't know. I like it. I like that sort of thing. Yeah, something out of a horror movie, sure, but I like little hidden things like that in the house. Another, quote, creepy, that's their opinion, interior room devoid of windows was purportedly used as a home theater. Dude, you got to have, I got blackout curtains. Awesome. So a little framing there. But that's not really the point. The LGBTQ pride paraphernalia littered the family's extravagantly furnished four-bedroom, five-bathroom house. It had more baths than beds. Uh, plus a packed three-car garage, including a rainbow Mickey Mouse stuffed animal placed atop a love above all pillow on the foyer's love seat where Zachary was swarmed by the SWAT team and a neon love is love sign that adorned the kitchen's granite countertop. The lamp's <coughs> pro-inclusivity phrase, a mainstream LGBTQ mantra that self-styled minor attracted persons have co-opted in a rebranding campaign that attempts to normalize sexual attraction to children is one Zachary frequently promoted online. You see, it's a... Rainbow turtle inside a shell says it's okay if you're not ready yet. <clears throat> the Zulocs own the collection of exotic pets, including a gopher tortoise, which Georgia recognizes as a protected species, in violation of state law, according to a ticket issued by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. In the interest of judicial economy, the state moved to dismiss the citation, given the alarming lot of life sentences that the Zuloc co-defendants are facing. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not worried about the damn turtle. They have multiple life sentences that they are facing. Zachary, a Biden voter, an ardent Black Lives Matter advocate who championed left-wing causes on Facebook, also often posted images of the house's I- exterior where a welcome mat emblazoned with a gayest place in town sat at the front door. Do we really need to know who he voted for and all that? Mm. This okay. This is where you start to get that that bias and and you know they get docked points over at town hall for doing this. Just give me the investigative report. It, it we don't have to n- know who he voted for and that he supports Black Lives Matter. That's irrelevant. I mean, I'm sure most people already assumed all of that, but <clears throat> that's irrelevant. It's not poor. This is good journalism. You don't need to disgrace it with those things. 
Quote, our business is our business. What happens in our home stays in our home. The gay couple allegedly told their abused sons. Wow. <clears throat> Beyond the uh, abuse, as punishment during after-school hours, <coughs> the Zulok boys were forced to stand in a corner for eight hours straight over back-to-back days, only being allowed to move to either eat or use the bathroom. William was also witnessed slapping their younger son hard in the face. They were just abused every possible way, the relative told Town Hall. The relative asked Zachary if he's worried about the two boys and wondering where his sons are. Quote, I mean, yeah, but I definitely can't talk about that. But, um, I mean, yeah, and then I'm concerned about the house and everything because, you know, nothing's being paid, obviously, because I'm here. The longer that things go on, the worse all that gets, Zachary responded. So that's what he's, he's worried about. Quote, the sooner we get out, the sooner I can manage our finances because things are going to start piling up, Zachary emphasized. William is concerned as well about bills and monthly expenses. Quote, we do have like subscription stuff that needs canceled, like, you know, Disney Plus, Amazon Video. All that needs to be canceled because it's auto hitting our credit card, William stressed. The boys were just another commodity to them, the family member voiced to town hall. <clears throat> just another commodity. There you go. That's some pictures from inside their mansion. Wow. Look at that chandelier right there. I guess that's right there in the foyer. Wow. Wow. Um, almost done here. My throat's just acting up this evening. Uh, this, by the way, the, the bourbon I'm... Sipping on tonight is a watered down, all the ice melted, watered down Jefferson Ocean. It's Voyage 23. Look it up. All right. Uh, back to it. Zachary seemed like an animated people pleaser with a penchant for self promotion. Now the case has destroyed the illusion of who I thought he was, the family member said. What a narcissistic sociopath. Another relative conveyed to Town Hall's insider that Zachary's overachieving overachieving persona was nothing more than a facade to portray a public image of success while the once blue-haired William who was the quiet and hard to read one quote always made my skin mm -mm, crawl <coughs> the family is questioning in hindsight how a low-level civil servant and a small town bank teller could indulge in such niceties after an application was submitted for representation by a public defender, a letter addressed to Williams shows that the county's indigent defense program found he is ineligible, citing equity ownership and his spouse's whopping $7,500 a week income. A similar denial memo was also sent to Zachary, who handles their money, pointing to his supposed well-to-do weekly earnings. According to Zachary's since-deleted LinkedIn page, he was a branch coordinator at the SunTrust Bank in Duluth, a career he touts on Pride-themed T-shirts, but the latest Glassdoor data says the position only carries a modest $62,000 in annual pay. <clears throat> $62,000. So, he's claiming that he makes $7,500 a week but the salary is only $62,000. Town Hall contacted the site's bank supervisor to confirm whether or not Zachary is still employed and truly raking in a six-figure salary. Quote, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to make any comments. We can't verify any information re re regard to any of that. Okay. Zachary took vacation time using leftover PTO for the first week or to in jail. Then he tried to place himself on a leave of absence, but the management wouldn't hear this plight. I'm pretty sure I don't work there anymore, which is fine because I don't like it anyway, so it's whatever, but I'm pretty sure I don't have a job anymore, Zachary told his family member. There he is in a rainbow Atlanta Braves T-shirt. Back when Zachary was a universal bank specialist at PNC Bank, he and William marched yearly in the Atlanta Pride Parade carrying rainbow born this way pride flags and sporting orange PNC shirts. <coughs> 
made by the Financial Services Corporation, a corporate partner and sponsor of the annual event. The marital partners also participated in AIDS Walk Atlanta year after year. This one on here on the right, you see he's got the floppy blonde hair. I think he was the one that also had the blue hair at one time that they mentioned earlier in this article, which I, I gives a little detail, but I, that's kind of unnecessary as well. We're getting getting very close to the end here, uh, folks. I'm just <clears throat> trying to make my throat cooperate so we can wrap this up. Meanwhile, William worked as a supervisor at the county at the county's Georgia Department of Driver Services, the customer service center off of Heritage Parkway, where he often assisted teenage student drivers who were seeking to obtain their learner's permit or driver's license. Prior to hiring, all DDS personnel underwent a background check, includes a criminal history report. Town call called DDS to inquire about William's employment status. They don't give out that information. Quote, the only money we had coming in is my paycheck and Zach's paycheck. William maintained. And then we never told anybody because it wasn't anybody's business, but we get child support from the state. He revealed to the relative. So the relative asked if they still get child support from the state. He says, mm-hmm, until they're 18. I didn't know that happened until after they were adopted. The relative stated, William laughingly said, I didn't know that either until we adopted them. When questioned about the legal defense paperwork, William countered that's something that that's something they pulled out of their rear end. Quote, did you mean the information on the finances or what they said in the bond hearing? The family asked William. Uh, quote, probably about the finances and what Zach makes, William answered, not outright denying what was alleged in the courtroom. All right, they got part two about the co-conspirators. I'm not going to do that tonight. Obviously, I'm having trouble with my throat. Uh, no need for a super long form video here. I just wanted to get this out. You can go look this up if you're more interested. This is townhall.com. <clears throat> Port two is just how big was the operation led by the LGBTQ couple who abused their adopted sons. <clears throat> Sorry, just trying to get my throat to work. Uh, and, and what's going on is it got colder again. Like, it got up to like 80 degrees yesterday. Then we had a cold front, and now it was like 40 this morning or something like that. And I'm having some, some drip. I've worked in radio for 20 years, and I'm going to have to go see like an ENT <clears throat> because I, I think the... Uh, I think I'm getting phlegm that's actually dripping onto my vocal cords now. They're no longer protected for whatever reason, <clears throat> which is what is constantly causing these issues. And I've had a lot over the last the last a year or two. I've been fighting with it and haven't gone to the doctor about it. Uh, so, unfortunately, that that's what's going on. I, and I'm assuming, I don't know if that's really what's going on, but that's what it feels like. Anytime I have... Like phlegm in my throat, it feels like it just sits there and kills my voice. Uh, Bort three, how did an accused child rapist adopt two children? So they get into that. And from what I understand, it seemed like it was fast tracked. <coughs> so here's the thing. The uh, the agencies, I'll just touch a little bit on it. The it, it was a Christian agency and they see about kids who are sometimes special needs. So I think one of these kids may or maybe both of them are special needs kids. And uh, I mean, which, you know, it's hard to say it makes things worse, but it kind of does. And then part four, what's jail like for two accused child rapists? That was the one that that they wrapped it up. I haven't even read part four yet. Obviously, my throat is is telling me it is time to stop. <clears throat> if you want to know more, I encourage you to go ahead and, and check it out. Here's the original. I'll scroll back up so you can see it. It's on Town Hall. And the title of the article, We Investigated a Suburban LGBTQ Pedophile Ring. Here's what we found. Again, look at the Google search here. 
these people are in jail. They are facing a bunch of life sentences. It's just the mainstream media is not doing a deep dive like Town Hall did. So I, I wanted to get that out because, again, you're not going to see this anywhere. Um, and uh, uh, even on places like uh, Tim Pool. I like Tim Pool. I think. No, I don't even think Tim Pool shared this on Twitter. Um, so. I don't know. I feel like nobody's covering this. And this is a huge, huge story. It's a story that needs to be heard. I'm not going to give too much of my opinion on this. I just want to say I'm not uh, anti-LGBTQ. Uh, just a, a month or two ago, I had a friend who she's gay. She, she married another uh, girl and fully endorsed it. We went to the... It was a small wedding, you know, we weren't invited, but we went to the dinner after. Uh, they had like a a reception type dinner. They didn't have much of a reception, but, and, and fully support them. They've been great friends 100% all the way. It's got nothing to do about that, folks. I'm just, you know, just telling you, it's got nothing to do about that. This is just a big story that the mainstream media is not covering, and I think I know why. These guys are big advocates, and... I can understand, you know, it, it's kind of like, I don't want to go too crazy, but it's kind of like the vaccine, right? Uh, every vaccine has side effects, and it's a scaling problem. When you have a big, huge scale, you give out millions and tens of millions, the 1% becomes more and more people, right? So, you know, it's... Is that sort of deal, you know, that people, but so they want to cover that up. They want to act like there's no side effects whatsoever with vaccines. And I feel like that may be going on here in the mainstream media. They're scared this will damage the LGBTQ community, especially with all the groomer stuff going on and the drag shows and, and this and that. Regardless of your feelings on any of that, all I'm saying is this is a huge story. It's got a lot to it. It ap appears they were they were pimping these special needs adopted children out. They were abusing them and they were pimping them out for abuse. I, I, I mean, just unbelievable. And nobody is covering this except Town Hall, and now the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail has, again, look, I'll show you. Daily Mail has got on it. They they started getting to it. But it's all thanks to, what's her name again? Mia Cathell. M-I-A-C-A-T-H-E-L-L. -L. Great work. Great work. All right, Lanyap Show recorded live on my personal Facebook page, and uh, then the video and audio is saved, and it goes here. Again, like, share, subscribe. If you're on any of these platforms, get the Lanyap Show on all of those platforms because, like I said, I don't – some of the, my content gets flagged. I, you know, I get knocks against my account. Sometimes I just have technical issues. I'm not – a genius so i'll try to upload something it won't work whatever the case may be not all of my content in its entirety is everywhere you know so it's better if you get all of them and then who knows how long i'll be on these before they ban me or whatever like i do have at least one strike on youtube so it is what it is i'm going to keep producing content and if they want to kick me off their platform that is fine uh Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm going to sign off. Hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. Again, no clips of this just because it's one long-form subject. And next week, I have no idea. I think about what I'm going to do for the show during the week. So I have nothing to promote. And I don't know, Chris may be on with me again. He may not. I've been talking with some other buddies that we want to get on and potentially do a a straw man debate or like a devil's advocate straw man type thing. Uh, they, 
are tossing these ideas around, and that's all fine and dandy, but will they come on my show to do these ideas? We will see. But thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, tell people about this story because people need to know.